What we did with the Unix shell was take the commands we'd been typing and save them in a file for reuse. So let's copy these lines. Let's quit out of SQLite and let's edit uh, query.sql. Actually, let's give it a more meaningful name than query. Uh, let's call it project hours. SQL. We'll edit out those bits of shell prompt. Again, I'm relying on history. I'm taking something that I just ran that worked, and I'm just pasting it in, getting rid of the stuff that would get in the way, so that I'm sure I'm running the same command. I miss the semicolon. So select project name and experiment hours from project join experiment where project project ID equals experiment project ID and add a comment. Comments in SQL are introduced by a double dash instead of a hash sign. Display project names and hours for each experiment. Save that, quit it, and now say SQLite 3, run on experiments.db, and there's the file that has the commands. Whoops. Error near project. Syntax error. Not sure what's wrong here. Let's read commands from the file using less than. Greater than sends output to a file. Less than reads input from a file. And there we go. That was the step I missed. I want to run SQLite 3 on that experiments.db file, because that's where my database is, and I wanted to read commands from, read input from, projecthours.sql. Okay, that just ran my query. So now, as my database changes over time, as people are adding more information from the lab about what experiments have been done, and who did them, and how long they took, anytime I want to get this listing, I can rerun that saved query and be sure that I'm getting the right answer. And what I can also do is select dollar ID colon dollar. No tables, no columns. I just select that static value, and that is what will get printed. Think of it as a degenerate case. I'm not actually getting data from tables. I'm just selecting a value from nowhere. Dollar ID colon dollar is that SVN keyword that we saw a little while ago. SVN prop set, SVN add project hours. Let's add it to the list of things version control is responsible for. SVN prop set, SVN keywords, project hours.sql. Oh, sorry, ID project hours.sql. Now the ID keyword is set. And commit created SQL script to get experiment names and hours. All right, now let's rerun the SQLite 3 command, and you can see that the first line of output is, once again, the identity of the script, the name and the version of the script that I used to produce this output. All right, that's kind of useful. It's the same sort of provenance information that I was getting in my shell examples for my scripts and my data files. You will often see that a database has a table in it called something like version or revision, which has a single column and a single row, which is the current version number. You will often see people select that and echo it in their output so that you can do provenance and say which version of the data was I working with. Other people with more sophisticated databases will put the revision number in every single record because they might be updating, for example, patient records in place without modifying the whole database. Again, if you want to keep track of what you've done so that you can go back and redo it, so that you can compare it to later results, so that you can track down bugs when they occur, so that other people can reuse your work, it's not very complicated to do, and the computer will do all of the hard work for you once you set it up. So, I've now got my experiments table. I've now got one command that will go and do things with it. You've only seen a few percent of the entire SQL language. There are commands in there to group things, 
to do sums and averages and other kinds of statistics to select the max and the min to count the number of records. There are many, many more sophisticated things you can do with joins. All of these are covered in our online material. The most important thing to keep in mind is that processing model. Everything is stored in rectangular tables. The tables have fixed columns but variable rows. You select things by saying here are the tables, join them together. The default case is just one table, but the common case is multiple tables joined together to give you all possible combinations of data. Then you use where to filter that out and throw away the things you don't want. And then you do the select to filter the columns to only keep the stuff you want to display. Okay. At this point, people often ask, how do you create a database? How do you add records? We've seen how to pull information out because that's the most common case. But somebody has to set up the database and put information in. Let's have a look at those operations. I run SQLite 3 on experiments.db. Now, there are a bunch of extra commands that for administration of databases that are not part of the SQL standard. Unfortunately, they've all got different names in different database systems. In SQLite 3, they all start with a dot character. In other systems, they start with a slash or a backslash. Dot help gives me a list of all of the special commands I can use. And they're things like backing things up, changing the separator, and so forth. One of the things I can do is ask for the schema. The schema of a database or any other kind of data is its logical organization, its shape. If I ask for dot schema, what SQLite 3 shows me is the commands I would have to type in in order to create these tables. This doesn't add any data. This sets up the tables with their names and their rows. And as you can see, I've got four tables. I would create the table experiment with three integer fields, a date field, and a real field. I would create a table called involved with three integer fields and a, log and a text field, and so forth. So if I want to create a new table, um, I could, for example, again, it doesn't have to be case sensitive, create table success with project ID integer. I'm inconsistent about my capitalization, but I hope you'll bear with me. And um, status is a boolean. Now if I do dot schema, you can see there's a success table that has an integer and a boolean field. Now at this point, hmm, Everybody else used all uppercase for the type. I've used lowercase. That's inconsistent. That's going to be harder for people to read. So let's drop table success. That deletes the table and all the data it contains. Be careful. And let's create table success with project ID integer and status bool. Bool is boolean, meaning true or false. Now if I do dot schema, great. I've got a success table that shows me whether my projects are successful or not. So now I can select star from project and I could say insert into success the values 1214 for anti-gravity, true, Sorry, one. SQLite uses one for true and zero for false. Other databases let you call them true or false. Insert into success values 1709. Insert into success values 1737. True. So now, select star from the success table tells me that I've got two successful and one unsuccessful project. This is bad database design. Let's take a look at our diagram again. Right now, all of the information about the project table, about projects, is stored in the project table, except the success, which is stored in a different table. Every single project will therefore have one record in the project table and one record in the success table. So the information about projects is scattered between two tables for no good reason. 
what I really should do is go back and add a column to the project table and fill that in. Whenever you've got two tables that mirror each other row for row, whenever you're supposed to add a record to table A, whenever you add a record to table B and vice versa in order to keep them consistent, what you're really seeing is these two tables ought to go together. There ought to be one table. The only time you would split information is in order to avoid that kind of duplication. We talk about this in the online tutorials. Please, before you go off and start setting up databases or designing them, have a read through that material. Because there are some rules about when you put stuff in one table, when you divide things between several different tables, the rules actually matter. If you don't follow them, your data will very quickly become inconsistent or gappy, and you probably have had to deal with badly designed data at some point, and you've cursed the person who created it. Please don't make these mistakes. We're not going to go into them right now, but there's lots and lots of material on how to do database design so that access is fast and consistency is more likely. So before you set one up, it's worth taking a couple of hours and going through that.